Thank you very much. Are there questions of Ms. White? None appear. I will go to the next speaker. So we have the Honorable Dr. Hannon, followed by Louise Spencer. And I would also like to remind everybody we are still under the three minute rule. And my timekeeper over here is putting them up. So when she puts up that three minutes, I expect you to, to uh, move to your uh, final statements. Thank you. Everybody looks the other way. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Hannon. Uh, thank you, and I'll, I'll get right to it, because she's, she's anxious starting off the two. Um, <laughs> my name is Joe Hannon. I'm from Lee, former state rep. Um, I spoke earlier on HB 101, and I, I don't want to repeat any of that stuff here, uh, but I do I do want to uh, say I agree with some of the people who spoke on this bill uh, when they said that they shouldn't have a patchwork of laws and leave this all to the local uh, municipalities to make you know, gun laws throughout. So I think that's uh, something that needs to be repeated. Um, there were a few things that jumped out about this, the language in this bill. Um, a lot of people that supported the bill said that they would incur, they wanted, um, they were upset that we didn't have the Gun-Free School Zone Act enforcement in New Hampshire. Well, that's not what this bill would do. This bill would actually be much more uh, egregious than the, than the existing federal statute. Uh, there are exceptions, but it does say no person, and any person who violates this. Now, the exceptions picking up and dropping off, whether it's loaded and unlocked. We heard people testify about how unsafe that is to uh, handle firearms uh, while unloading and loading in public, and that increases the danger. The second provision says any person authorized and ready by the school board or duly authorized that needs to possess a firearm, and it gives some uh, specifics about how that may happen. Um, that sounds great on its face, but in reality, we know that's not going to happen. Um, one of the members, representatives from my local school board had testified earlier, pretty much said they don't want them in the school. So that has nothing to do with me. This would not help me one bit, um, unless they change their mind. But anyway, um, the other thing um, one that we heard about was the, the federal constitution doesn't cover, um, you know, there allows some regulations to occur, but we know that the New Hampshire statute, Article 2A, is, is very different, and it's extremely clear and unambiguous. Now, the argument was made that we don't allow, that doesn't mean it's unlimited. And I completely agree with that. It doesn't mean you can shoot up the school. It doesn't mean you can threaten somebody. It doesn't mean you can arm someone. It means you have the right to keep and bear arms and protection of yourselves and others for the, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But you can't do these other things. So it does not mean that it's unlimited in that sense. Nothing is prohibiting a law-abiding person from protecting themselves in the current law. The only thing this bill would do would be to put up a sign. And we know that diplomas and signs don't stop bullets. You know, if we have a problem, even uh, no matter what side of this bill you're on, if you have a, someone breaking into your home and they're armed and dangerous, and you don't have a firearm, I imagine the first thing I would do would be to call the police, who would hopefully show up with a firearm. Now, I don't want to have to wait that long, which is why I do own firearms in my home. But I don't think that we should make a blanket statement for everyone in the state to say that you can't have them here no matter what whatever these few exceptions are that absolutely disarm people and will not allow this in many localities in the state. So, um, that's it. Thank you very much. Yes. Thanks for testifying. Any questions for the presenter? Now, Jerry, thank you very much. And I'll call on Louise Spencer, uh, followed by Wayne LaVertel. Welcome, Ms. Spencer, to uh, House Education. Thank you for having me, Mr. Chairman and to all the committee members here today, thank you. And thank you for hearing this important testimony. It's a critically <coughs> important issue given all that's gone on in our country in the last couple of years. Um, my, the main point of my testimony today is I just wanted to clarify a couple of things for the record. We hear many people saying that this would create gun-free zones, and clearly that is not what this bill would do. It, um, the title of it is an act relative to possession of firearms in safe school zones. And it makes very clear that the school shall have the authority to have um, law enforcement properly trained school resource officers and others who are able to be in the school with weapons if that is deemed necessary for the safety of the school. So I think to call this a gun-free zone is a misnomer. The other um, thing I've heard said repeatedly today is that there have not been instances of guns in New Hampshire schools. This too is simply not true. In 1985, here in Concord, at Concord High, there was a student, Louis Cartier, who came to school 
with a gun. He was a dropout. He showed up at the school. People were not aware of what was going on. It was one of the first lockdown situations in the country. Unfortunately, that situation ended in tragedy when Mr. Cartier was shot by a police officer because uh, he was deemed to be a threat to other students, um, and that was found to be a justified shooting. But it was a tragedy that happened right here in our own community. So I've heard many people today say there have not been no instances. Um, I did not have to look very far to find that instance. So that's, that's my testimony, and I just wanted to share it. I did not prepare written testimony. I would be happy to forward a, a copy of the article that is called Before Parkland, Parkland and Santa Fe, There Was Concord High School. Thank you very much. Are there questions of Ms. Spencer? Now, very thank you. Thank you for being here. And I would now like to call Wayne Hotel. Did I pronounce that right?